Hey everybody, it's the Trout, and welcome to another episode of the Trout Show. Thank you so much for stopping by. It was only about a year ago that I sat down and talked to a wonderfully talented young lady, Kiersey Jolie, who plays a mean blues harp. That's harmonica for those people not into the industry. She talked about how she started when she was just, I think, seven or eight years old and how she became better and better. Well, now a year later, I got an opportunity to talk to her again. She's played at a lot of festivals. She's won multiple awards, and now she's released her first single. It's called Hey There Blues. In fact, you heard a little bit of that right before you got to see me. So she talks about how she got a wonderful nonprofit to help her out to get to the studio and how she continues to grow her fan base and her ability to write better music all the time. And we, I look forward to seeing a lot of her in the near future. So sit back and enjoy this episode with 16-year-old now, Kiersey Jolie, a phenomenal blues harp player. That's next on The Trout Show. So let's talk about the beginning here. It's been a year. You've been real busy telling me, tell me what you've been kind of doing. I mean, I see your post on Instagram and socials, but tell me what you've been doing to promote yourself. And we'll get to the song in a minute. Yeah. Um, well, a lot of it has just been going out and playing. Um, this past year, I've had quite a few festivals that I've been playing at. Um, and I've got a couple more things that I'm playing that as well for the rest of the summer. Um, but you know, I'm not one to really love being on social media. Um, yeah, but, um, it's a great way to network and I've met so many of my friends through Instagram. Um, and so many of the people that I know, um, through Instagram and through that kind of just seeing their posts. And so I've really started to just continue to post like all about my journey. And it, it's so fun to go back and look at photos from where mm. I was like a few years ago, even to now and be like, just see the growth through my talent that's happened. The, the funny thing about it is this, is when you get in your 20s, you look at these pictures going, I look like a kid. Well, of course, you were a kid. Yeah. So tell me, the festivals you play, are they, what kind of, what is it, just a, different types of people playing? Or, I mean, they all have a theme, I assume, behind them. Well, yeah, the, uh, back in May, I went to a Women in Blues festival in Florida. Um, and it was so great down there. I had so much fun and um, I got to play with a band and it was a bunch of women just coming around and playing great blues music. And I got to play harmonica for a couple of the people that were up there, a couple of the women that were up there. And it was, it was, I had such a fun time because it, it was just like a family down there. And we all got together and we just talked and, um, before the shows and, we hung out and there was this little green room that we would just talk and tell stories behind before our show. And, you know, we'd get up, we'd perform. And it was, it was such a great experience to just be around a bunch of other women who are doing this genre that, you know, you don't often hear women no. doing. No. And no. so it, it was just, just a really great experience it was so incredible to be down there and be a part of it too this past weekend i was in north carolina for the black mountain blues festival mm. and if you haven't been to black mountain that is a beautiful place to go it was incredible seeing all the mountains around us and you just, you felt yourself in nature, but you were also kind of like in a town as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I got to perform Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And it was just such a cute little quaint town. And everyone was so friendly. And you, you didn't feel out of place. And it was just so much fun. That was one of the most fun shows I've ever gotten to play at. Um, because I did my performance and then I was asked 
to play with Piper and the Hard Times, who um, were the 2024 IBC winners. Mm. Um, and so I went and played with them on Friday night, and I had such a fun time. It was so fun um, playing with them, and it was just it was a really rocking night. Um, and it was so cool just to meet so many people. And there was a youth panel that we had done on Sunday or no Saturday. Um, and I got to meet a couple of kids. Well, not kids. I think they were, um, teenagers. Um, but they do a band and it, it's so nice to meet a bunch of people who are just in your same boat, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and, you know, share experiences and stories and just understand that we all are a family and playing the blues. It doesn't matter what age you are. You can no. always play. Yep. Um, so, yeah. That, that, that's the one thing that as you get older, that's why a lot of the blues artists are are older because nobody cares. Mm -hmm. It's it's like if you've been you know it doesn't matter if you watch if you go watch the blues performers, and they're twenty, or they're seventy, it doesn't matter. People just hear them and they start playing it, and they don't. It's not like pop world and everything else where they got oh I got to have the look and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But the other thing about it for you though is, you're enjoying what you're doing. Of course, you're playing all the time, which you get better. And then you're talking to your peers and they show you like, how do you do that? That little mm -hmm. lick right there. That's uh, we do that with guitar players all the time. Like I never thought about that. But then the other part of it is one day you'll be doing it and you're having a good time and you're getting paid to do it. That's really yeah. that's the best part about it. It's like, you know, there's, there's the good side about it. It's like, Oh, I love what I'm doing. I get paid to do it. But the bad side about it is I have to keep, I have to have another gig. I have to, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. I know you're loving your mom and all that stuff now, but as you get older, you're like, okay. And then, and then you're just on tour all the time, which now everybody's on tour. I mean, cause you know, you yeah. don't make any money selling records, but so you have to be on tour. So let, let me ask you real quick. Have you, and I don't know whether you've done, have you developed, I think you do. Have you got merchandise already? Have you got that developed so you can sell it? Um, we haven't really gotten that we did one time we had little shirts that we did um when i was eight or nine something like that i was pretty young uh, well younger than i am now um but we stopped doing those for a little bit and i think we're gonna try to work back into doing that kind of merchandise thing um now that i'm starting to have some songs be released and everything like that um, cause we were in North Carolina and I had gotten asked, um, my dad was wearing my, one of my old t-shirts that we'd mm -hmm. made a while back. And this guy had come up, he was like, where can I get that shirt? And we were like, well, unfortunately we don't make that shirt anymore. So we're definitely looking back into, um, making some more merchandise, but I have like stickers now that I'll give to mm -hmm. people. And if they want me to sign them, I'll sign them. Um, and we also have like some blues magazines that I put an advertisement in, mm. uh, that I've started taking to some of these festivals to, um, give out and everything. When did you, were you approached? I know you're really good at performing, but were you approached by somebody? I know you've been writing to about recording or was that somebody you went out and found somebody? How, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, um, I went out and found this great nonprofit organization um, called Notes for Notes. Um, they're based in California, I believe, but they have a bunch of studios here in Tennessee as well. Um, I found them online through um, another friend of mine who went through them for a little bit to record some of his stuff. And right now his name is eluding me um <laughs> it's okay it'll happens come at to you. the time it'll you come need to you. It. i know it'll, it'll come to you <laughs> trust me it will and so we had went and i had met some of their producers and i realized how great of an organization it was mm -hmm. and you know they made it such a 
tight network family that you just felt right at home with all of them. And it, it didn't feel like it was strict. It didn't feel like, okay, we need to get in, get this done, mm -hmm. get out. They, they really took the time to know me and to get a feel for what I do and how I do things and um, understand what I wanted for the song and my goals for how I wanted the song to turn out. So it was really cool to meet all of them and uh, start my journey with them and have my first song be released through them as well. So, How many songs did you record when you went? Did you just do the one or did you decide that you have time to do more than one? Well, we had decided to focus on the one song. I do have other songs that I'm currently working with them on. Um, but this, we had realized, and I think it was something that God had really uh, laid into our lap, um, that this song was Hey There Blues was one of the first original songs I co-wrote when I was in Tennessee. Mm. Um, when we had moved, I decided, you know what, I'm going to work with some peers who have been doing, have been writing, and I'm going to co-write. And I went into a room with Corey Lee Barker and Ava Page, and they, they both knew that I played blues harmonica. Mm -hmm. And so we had decided that we were going to write a blues song and the song, Hey There Blues came out of it. And this was back in 2019 or 20 early 2020 when I had first, when we had first moved out here to Tennessee mm. and we wrote this song and I just played it and played it and played it. And I've been playing it at a bunch of my shows since we wrote this song. And I have just, developed that song into um what i believe it was truly meant to turn out as and then to record it and have it be the first original song that i release it was so cool to kind of go through that journey um, and have notes for notes go through that journey with me as well how many people were performing on it um let's see so I had my friend uh, Locke Thornton come in and put some slide guitar on it and some regular electric guitar. And it just, he is such a talented guitarist and he's so humble about it too. And He is good. Um, I, don't, I forgot about him. I need to talk to him sometime because he's really good. I remember seeing him last year and it was like, you know, he's, he's phenomenal already at, at a young age. Yeah. Yeah. He's kind of doing his own stuff, um, getting his own band together and going out and performing. Um, but I got him in to put some electric guitar and slide on my song. And it just, it made the song feel like how it was meant to sound. Mm -hmm. And it was so great seeing how the slide worked so well in that song and then putting it together with my harmonica too. And it just, it made the song come together. And then um, Notes for Notes has a bunch of people in their um, studio that play a bunch of instruments. Um, and so I think a lot of the other instruments that are in there um, were done by people from the Notes for Notes organization mm. as well. And then uh, I'm doing the acoustic guitar on it and then I'm doing harmonica and the vocals. And so they brought in the drummer and the bass player or whatever that mm -hmm. they added on there. Okay. Yeah. Was it, and I know you've been to the studio before, but was it intimidating at all? I mean, usually when you first time you go to studio, especially a really nice studio, you're like, oh, I don't know if I'm worthy of this. What do you, I mean, how did you feel? I mean, yeah, kind of that way. Like, I went in and I, I kind of had like that kind of, oh, like laid back, maybe keep to myself a little bit. It was, it was a little nerve wracking. Um, and I never get, I'm not one to get too nervous whenever it comes to things. Uh, but when, once I got to know them, I, I really started to open up and it was so nice just kind of talking to them for a little bit and really getting to know who they are and who like, 
and them getting to know who I am and kind of growing into that relationship and working on this song and seeing the song grow as our uh, friendships grew as well in the organization. And so after a little bit, I felt right at home. And my mom, my mom could really tell because she, she knows how I am at the house and she knows how I am with um, new people. And yeah, so she could yeah. really tell when I really started to open up to them sure. as well. Yeah. Um, so it was really nice and it, it didn't take very long to get, really comfortable and um to know them really well has it been released or it's getting better i don't remember what it it has been released it was released uh last friday okay and what are you going to do with it now that you've got it you've got the song how are you going to promote yourself uh well a lot of it um has been Um, I've been going out and when I play before it was released, um, I would put it in my set list and I would be like, this song is coming out this day and this time. So definitely go download it and everything. And it's really cool to now be able to be like, this song has been released. Um, if you like it, go download it, go stream it. Um, and so it's a really, it's kind of heartwarming knowing that I have this song that I'm so proud of and how it turned out and to be able to go out and be like, you can officially listen to this song um, anytime you'd like. And it was really cool. And I, I like what you said earlier about like not being able to even sometimes repeat what you play when you're playing an yeah. instrument. Um, and that's kind of what I think about whenever I'm playing harmonica. A lot of my harmonica is just feel Mm -hmm. and I play what I feel. And if it comes out good, it comes out good. If it comes out bad, I say, well, we're redoing that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And, but it's just something you feel deep inside. And I love when it comes out, when someone listens to it as well. And I love when they, when you hear, when you see someone listen to it um, and you can tell that they feel it just by listening to it through a little device that they're holding. And it's amazing to know that my feelings crossed into this song and to them as well. It is a remarkable thing when you think about it. And the great thing about music is it's communicating. It doesn't matter what language you speak. Mm-hmm. I'm always, I'm always in, in, in impressed by the people I've interviewed that go to Europe and play. What was I was talking to one time? And they said they got over there and they uh, they started singing a song. And they don't speak English. I don't know what country yeah. they're in. And they were all singing the songs. Or the, I mean, the words to the lyrics. And he's like, it's just weird. And I go, no, it's not. They heard your music all the time. Every time you go out and play now, you can say, hey, you know, let me get my phone out. Here you, here's the name. <laughs> <laughs> it's right here. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's right here. And, and I kind of envision you, you, you're taking the, 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 the long, not wrong, long road, but you're taking your time. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, people forget when they start hearing you because you're such a great player already, how old you are. Are you 16 mm-hmm. yet? I am 16. Yeah. Oh, car driver now. Um, I always ask parents, your kid's 16? Tell me what car they're driving so I can make sure I stay out of the way when I'm in the road. Um, <laughs> um, but they forget you have a real life. Yeah. You know, you got to go to school. You know, it's not like you can't. Uh, what was I working with? They finally, I'm trying to remember somebody I know, maybe it's somebody you know about. They ended up homeschooling their kid because they were doing so much stuff i said well when's he going to school no 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 we're to homeschool him now because we got to go here and we got to go there we got to you know and that kind of thing and yeah. that's that's exactly what happened with me uh we moved well i originally was homeschooled in missouri before this whole before we moved and my whole music started uh to pick up and i really started to go out and perform um 
But when we moved out here, we realized what a blessing it was to be homeschooled because I was going here and I was going there and I was doing this and I had to co-write this morning. And homeschooling gave me that freedom of being able to do all of that and still have a way to learn and to grow in my education. Um, And it also gave me the freedom to learn about my music. Um, This past year, I took um, music theory and Mm -hmm. oral theory, um, the singing portion Mm -hmm. and sight singing portion of theory. And I took it this past year and I realized how much it has helped me to grow in my music playing. Mm -hmm. And I don't really sight read that much and Mm -hmm. I I don't look at a paper and go, Oh, I can, you know, play that perfectly. Um, It it comes back to feel again um, and how it feels to me. Um, But it was, it was such a great thing for me to be able to have, that time to really focus on what I wanted to do instead of focusing on um, focusing on what schools nowadays are teaching you to go off to college to learn something that you might get paid well at, um, but it's not something that you love to do. I mean, right. it, it always could be. We all have different passions and everything, but with music, it's such a hard thing to really have that focus of schoolwork and music. Um, So homeschooling was one of the great things that happened and allowed me to focus on my music as well as learning my education. Well, the other part about it is, as you know, creativity is not something you know when it's coming. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not, I'm not, you never know when that thing's going to hit you. And if you're sitting in class at one o'clock in some class and you're going like, oh man, I got I need to, I got this idea. It's over. I mean, you might all write down, it's like that. But now, because yeah. you, you can do what you want to do, you can sit, I mean, within, obviously within reason, but I mean, now you can go, hold on. <laughs> mm-hmm. Let's write this down. It may go somewhere, it may not, but you just don't know. Well, here's yeah. a question for you, because this is the thing that always happened to me. I want, I always wanted to be a guitar player that sings, not a singer that plays guitar. But -hmm. inevitably, when people heard me, they would go, well, I didn't know you could sing. I go, what about my guitar playing? Oh, you're really good, but what about... And I'm going like, no, 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 no. So I would bet you, you want to be a harmonica player that sings, not a singer that plays harmonica. Well, that's kind of thing. I, I want to be it all. I, I don't... Harmonica is my main instrument, and it is what I excel at. Um, but I love that I'm not known as just a harmonica player mm-hmm. or just a singer or just sure. a guitar player. Yeah. I'm, I'm known as this mix of, of all three, and it's so great to know. And back when I first started singing as well as playing harmonica, um, I would just play the backing tracks, you know, and I would just play harmonica to Mm -hmm. these backing tracks and, you know, sing in my little girl voice. And, (laughs) (laughs) and I I would have so much fun. And then when we moved out here, I realized, well, I can't have a backing track when I'm playing a songwriter's round and everything like that. And so I got my guitar And I had a couple of teachers who taught me the basics. And my teacher right now, Nikki Hines, he is teaching me kind of like incorporating um, all the scales and everything like that into my playing and different positions um, and everything like that. And so it's really cool to see how far my guitar has come from just playing three chords mm-hmm. to being able to play all of my songs on guitar, no matter what key it's in. Um, and then when I moved out here, I also realized, well, if I'm really wanting to take this somewhere, I have to 
learn to focus on my voice as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I found a great vocal coach and I got with him. um, I got with him once a month and to see, I started with him August of two years. Um, Maybe a little before that. Maybe it's only been like a year and a half. Right. Um, but I got with him and to see the exponential growth of where I was when I started with him and to where I am now, it, it's it been life changing, really. And being able to now get compliments on my voice and not just my harmonica because mm-hmm. I go on stage and they see this young girl and they don't know how I'm going to start singing, you know, and they don't know how I'm going to start playing harmonica and to see, to look out into the crowd and to not only see them kind of have that, Oh wow, she's a great singer. Look, mm-hmm. but then they get that. Whoa, she's an amazing harmonica player as well. Yeah. And people will come up and they'll be like, your harmonica sounded awesome and your voice is amazing. And I'm like, thank you. Cause I worked so hard oh, on yeah. this gift that I was given to make it to where I'm not just solely one thing. And that's what I was going for when I started loving music um, and really focusing on developing how I wanted to turn out as a musician. People love to hear the blues, but it's not something everybody wants to hear. Yeah. So you might, and I'm sure you've ran into this, probably your friends, you go, well, what do you play? I play blues harmonica. What's that? You know, and then you play it and you go, I'd really listen to Taylor Swift. Okay, whatever, you know. But when you get in front mm-hmm. of your peers and you're playing at a festival and it's a blues festival and you hear them, they're like, whoa, that, that's really what it's about. One of the big things is, you know, I know how to play. I know what I'm doing on my instrument, and I know how to take that. But when it comes to the business side of things, Mm -hmm. I'm a little, I'm less knowledgeable on that side. And so that was one of the big things that I was like looking at colleges. I was like, I want to learn the business side. I want to know, like, how they think on that side and how to (laughs) have that knowledge just for when, as I'm growing and, you know, getting older. And so I know what to look out for, what to expect, um, you know, really how to protect myself from things that could potentially happen. Um, Because, you know, not everybody wants to sign you because you're good. And you don't always need to be signed to become something. And so I just, that was one of the big things when I was looking for colleges. I was like, I want to know this side of the music world. Are you, are you booking, I mean, who's, who's helping you? Are you, obviously you're good at it. Are you looking up all these places to go and try to play at, or are you getting somebody to help you do that, or is that all on your own? Uh, a lot of it is, I mean, Instagram. Um, Instagram is a big source, and, you know, I'll go to some of the people that I'm following and see who they're following. And um, mm-hmm. and I'll be like, oh, okay, this they're following the, this person or uh, this organization, and I'll – like kind of scroll through that organization's Instagram, see what they're about. And I'm like, you know what? I think they'd be a good thing to like follow and be there and see what goes on. Um, and, you know, I'll go to my mom sometimes. Cause she's like, we call her the momager. She's <laughs> my sort of manager kind of side of thing. I like that momager. Me, I like that name. Though, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Keeping me on track and, helping me out. So she does help me out sometimes uh, with some things, but most of it is me looking on Instagram and just kind of finding these things. Um, 
for the festival that I was most recently at, the Black Mountain Blues Festival, mm -hmm. the girl who kind of spearheaded it, Melissa McKinney, she was at the IBCs and she had made it to the finals. Mm. And so we had um, met her through the IBCs and um, she reached out to me and had asked if I wanted to play at her festival. And I was like, yeah, of course. And it wasn't, it wasn't till a little bit after that we had realized that that's who she was and that we had met her from the IBCs. And when we had, when we had realized this, we were like, oh my gosh, that's who that was. She was amazing at the IBCs. And it, it was so cool to make that friendship through something that we had both kind of done, um, doing the IBCs and everything like that. Um, so yeah, a lot of it was just going on to Instagram, scrolling, searching, seeing who other people follow, um, and kind of just reaching out through Instagram or emailing them. Um, and a lot of places locally in Nashville are places that you have to go into and like be a part of their songwriters round so that they mm. have just being, being an audience member and getting to know them first. Right. And then when you feel close, like you learn how to, um, become that sort of family as well and you finally get up there and it it already feels familiar to you because mm -hmm. you've been there and you know who you're playing with and you know who you're working with and everything one of the first harmonica teachers I ever had he introduced me to the blues and it, it was so cool to be able to feel something so much that I really, I mean, I haven't been broken up with. I haven't dated <laughs> anyone. I mean, yeah, that's what I meant. I earlier. haven't had a bunch of like experiences, but there's something about the blues that you feel no matter what, no matter how old you are, no matter what you're playing. You, there's something that just moves you in the mm -hmm. blues. And the blues was the, the genre of music that made me realize that I wanted to continue to play. And, you know, I, I learned how to play country music on harmonica as well. And, um, and now I'm starting to kind of go into that combined genre um, of taking blues and country and a little bit of rock and turning it into this kind of mixed genre mm -hmm. um, and putting myself in to this place where not many people go and realizing how much I love to play it because it makes me feel so good. Mm -hmm. And I love it when I can see that my music makes others in the audience feel so good. A chair and won't you stay for a while? My baby done and gone, and I can't find my smile. Hey, the blows been too long. Won't you say?
it for this episode of the trout show thank you so much for stopping by i appreciate it very very much very big special shout out to kiersey jolie for coming on and talking about her musical journey if you have an opportunity you want to know more about her you can find her instagram her instagram handle is in the key of kiersey in the key of kiersey and also you might want to check out her song hey there blues is now available on all major music platforms so thanks very much Kiersey and also if you're interested in knowing more about the trot show you know where to find it go to the trot show.com and everything's there information about all the podcasts that we do and all the YouTubes we do and all the music that we do and believe me we have some shows coming up that I'm going to be telling you they're going to be fantastic some great guests and a very special opportunity for something new and exciting it's going to be only here on the Trout Show. So until next time, people, you know what I say. It's only rock and roll. But I love it. See ya. <laughs>